old media uh, is never entirely obliterated by new media, whatever that happens to be yes. at any given epoch. But as we have discovered that time and space can be collapsed and yes. that a new media vehicle, the internet, can bring us all kinds of information, it can bring us new yeah. kinds of community, it can make us uh, capable of speaking to others through blogs or, or yes. podcasts, whatever we want to do. Um, how do we change our view of old media? Do we expect something new from the television networks, from, from cable, than what we've expected before? I think absolutely. Um, it, I think it's actually what we expect is to be able to participate and interact with the media. For instance, uh, the other day, uh, David, uh, I think it's David Brooks, isn't it, at New York Times? Uh, he writes occasionally on what's happening with young families and children, an area that I'm very keen on. And uh, I sent him an email the other day, because I, I, I do know a little bit about this, and, and he's very much, he and I are on the same page. And it just disappeared into the New York Times kind of, you know, more. I, I, I can see that Brooks might be too busy, but you know there are other people who are very keen on the topic. So if the New York Times had made available a place where we could start to talk about this and develop the ideas further, I think that would be. So that's where I think the new, old media and new media are going to intersect. That uh, old media I think is still going to be around, you and I will be long dead and there'll still be TV programs and there'll still be newspapers and things. But I, what I see the new media doing is wrapping around that and uh, providing space where people can get involved with the issue and hopefully with the principle as well. Now the problem for the institution is that if you simply open up the gates and everybody comes in, then you get all the trolls and, and everything. So there is still a, an editorial function here. So I, I see the new media, the intersection being a bit like um, the kind of 18th century French salon of sort of, so you have the Marquise de Todd <laughs> who, in, who invites some people into his space and introduces them and hosts host, host conversations about topics that are going on in the, main, in the mainstream media. Does that mean I'm going to have to trust, potentially, ABC more than I've trusted ABC before? I mean, I've trusted them for news, or PBS, or, yeah. or NBC. I mean, it sounds like I'm getting closer to the old media than I've ever been. I don't think you have to trust anybody. I think trust is the key issue, though. So organize, in this new world, organizations that cannot be trusted, have proved that they shouldn't be trusted, are going to lose out very badly. So for instance, if you think of eBay, the whole point of eBay is to set up conditions where people who normally couldn't trust each other can. The great advantage I see for public television and public radio is that you already have a highly trusted brand. What I mean by that, it means you're not entirely in bed with your advertisers. And it means that so you, you can take a stand on issues and you do. And so if you can do that, that, uh, that might be the most valuable asset that, I'm going to use the word public media has, is that you are already trusted. And that therefore if you open space for people to talk about important issues, and you uh, set up an ecology within that space so that the trolls couldn't ruin it, I, I think you'd leap ahead of the other uh, media people who people don't trust, for good reason and they have all sorts of experience to tell them that they shouldn't trust them. Very hard to get trust if you've lost it. 